Before all these things, that is, before abandonment, the rod, and punishment, there are warnings. These are the lightest things. Warnings mean that people may warn you, but you don't pay attention, like Jonah the prophet. The sea could have calmed down if only Jonah had prayed like all the sailors on the boat. They told him to pray. If he prayed, apologized, and turned around to go to Nineveh, as he was told to do, everything would have been solved. This wind was a warning. Abigail warned David when he was about to do another crime. This time, however, David listened to the warning. He went out to get revenge, but she was wise and met him and calmed him down. In 1 Samuel chapter 25, David said to Abigail, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, who sent you this day to meet me. He could hear the warning and understood it. So shouldn't we understand as well? He could have been punished if he continued his way and killed the man. When David returned, the man died on his own. The Lord solved the problem. Sometimes there are warnings before the discipline, but we don't pay attention. We get many warnings from God directly. Be careful. It's been a little long time since you prayed. There is a sin on your heart, etc. Cain was warned by God before killing his brother. He hated his brother, so God warned him first. In Genesis chapter 4, If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. But Cain didn't listen and was punished with eternal punishment. Also Eli, the high priest, was warned by the boy Samuel. God talked to Samuel at night, and Eli asked Samuel to tell him everything. Samuel was embarrassed because he was the high priest. He told him that God is upset because he favors his sons over God. This was a clear warning, but Eli was too weak and let his children do what they did. The punishment was hard at the end. God also warned Judas. He said, Assuredly I say to you, one of you will betray me. He also warned his disciples. Jesus said to them in Matthew chapter 26, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. After a few hours, they all did. These are warnings that we don't pay attention to, so we continue our way and get disciplined. In Amos, God said, I blasted you with blight and mildew. When your gardens increased, your vineyards, your fig trees, your olive trees, the locusts devoured them, yet you have not returned to me, says the Lord. We can say this is the warning. I sent among you a plague after the manner of Egypt. Egypt was famous for its plagues. Your young men I killed with a sword, along with your captive horses. I made the stench of your camps come up into your nostrils. Yet you have not returned to me, says the Lord. This we can consider to be the rod. Then I overthrew some of you, as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and you were like a firebrand plucked from the burning. Yet you have not returned to me, says the Lord. This was a tougher punishment. And then, therefore, thus will I do to you, O Israel, because I will do this to you. Prepare to meet your God, O Israel. He warned them. He pushed them. He abandoned them for a little. He used the rod. He gave them a long, hard punishment. Yet Israel did not return. So what more could God do after all that? After this, there is the meeting with God, where there are no more opportunities to return. This is the sequence that the Lord implements. The thing that God wants is to return to Him. Surprisingly, God is so cool when He disciplines. He doesn't get nervous. He isn't full of anger like our evil anger. He can negotiate when He disciplines, which we miss as parents and educators. When we get upset, we frown, yell, shout, and curse. Jonah was disciplined by the sea and whale, but God talked to him with gentleness, saying, What's wrong, my beloved? In Jonah 4.4, 4, the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Jonah insisted that it was right. So God prepared a plant and made it come up over Jonah, that it might be shade for his head to deliver him from his misery. But as morning dawned, the next day God prepared a worm to damage the plant that it withered, so they could continue the conversation. Jonah was angry again, so God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the plant? God wasn't full of rage. 
Discipline doesn't mean that he is frowning. He is kind forever, but he finds discipline necessary. This communication tells us that God doesn't feel differently about us as we think. He brings discipline for your sake, but he is still meek. Jonah was angry and said that he knew that God is kind and merciful. I think God was about to tell him that these qualities prevented him from sending Jonah to hell. When Job was disciplined, he received a very hard discipline, starting at the last stage. He didn't start the sequence from the beginning. Again, God didn't talk with anger. He said in Job 38, Who is this who darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Now prepare yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. How tranquil is that? God will ask, and Job will answer. Weren't you upset, Lord? He wanted to tell Job that you know, and I don't know. You understand, Jonah. I do not understand. I make mistakes, and you don't make mistakes. So teach me. Since you think I'm wrong and you're right, I'm not upset, but I'll ask you questions and you answer me. Job chapter 40 Would you condemn me so that you may be justified? Although the thing that David had done displeased the Lord, Nathan received a command from God to tell David a story. God was calm and patient. He wanted to talk with him quietly. When we discipline our children, we shouldn't get irritated. We should take action without anger. God talks with us quietly even if he will discipline us. He is the king of peace. Some questions that maybe have no answer. Does every sin have discipline? I don't think so. Does repentance eliminate discipline completely? Not necessarily. Does discipline vary regarding the position of the sinner? Usually yes. Can discipline affect those who didn't sin? Sometimes. The only answer for these questions is, from Romans chapter 11, verse 33, How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. And glory be to God forever. Amen.